Hey everybody, it's Paula here from the Excel Club and welcome to today's video. Today I have decided to start a new series of videos and this series of videos is going to be based on Excel content that I curate from the web. I'm always reading Excel blogs and watching Excel videos and it can be hard to stay on top of what's going on and find all the gems. So the idea of this weekly video is for me to find all those little gems, those golden nuggets of Excel blog content on the web and share them with you. So this is the first week and I do hope that you enjoy the blog content that I'm going to share with you today. So the first blog post that we are going to look at today is a blog post by Minda Tracy. And this is on Excel pivot tables for to create a profit and loss statement. Now I am an accountant, so I very much value posts like this. And Minda goes through quite a lot in this tutorial. There's also a accompanying video, but you can see here that by the end of it, you'll be able to create a profit and loss statement using pivot tables like this one that contains actual budgets, variances and variance percentages. And then it also is interactive because it uses slicers as well. And then there is also some icons placed in here too. So the blog post is quite detailed. And if you're interested in using pivot tables to create a profit and loss statement for your organization or for a client, I would definitely hop over and take a look at that post. The next post that we are going to look at touches on some more basic Excel. And it's how to remove commas in Excel from either text or numbers and you'll find this on the Trump Excel blog. Now this blog post goes through a number of methods for removing commas in both text and numbers. Methods such as the number value function, formatting function and then in text using find and replace and using the substitute function. It is quite common now that Excel is used to connect to data sources. The data and numbers are pulled in as text with commas when you really need them as numbers. So this is a great tip for you to convert all those text values with commas into numbers and to remove commas from numbers themselves. The next blog post that we are going to look at is a blog by George from Stringfest. Now, I really enjoyed this blog. It is why is Excel the best way to learn analytics? This is not a tutorial post. It's just basically a peace of mind. Many of us in Excel have ventured more towards working with larger sets of data and data analytics. As Excel kind of grew from just a spreadsheet solution to more of an analytics package, using Excel to learn analytics is a great way to learn analytics. And in George's post, he goes through the details of why Excel is a great tool to learn analytics. And to be honest, he got things spot on like cognitive overload. And I know myself when I started to learn more about data and there was coding involved and everything else, it was just total information overload. So I can very much relate to this post by George. The next post that we're going to look at is a post on ablebits.com. And this is how to generate random numbers in Excel without duplicates. Now, very often you will need to create random numbers in Excel so that you can, you need a sample of data so you can practice something or something like that. And when you use the RAND functions, you quite often get duplicates. So this goes through the different steps involved and how to generate uh, random numbers without duplicates. It goes through the solutions using Excel 365 and using dynamic arrays, which is really, really cool. There are some very creative uses of functions in here. 
And then it also goes through the options for creating random numbers in Excel using earlier versions than Excel 365. So again, there'll be a link below my post below this video to all of these posts. So do hop over and check out that post. Now, the next post is an informative post. It's on concessors.com and it is a detailed post. Well, it's not that detailed. It is, it touches on Excel crashing file issues and solutions. So if you're coming into problems that your Excel files are crashing, that your Excel files are too big, or there's other issues, this is a handy little resource to have to know what to do on how to repair things, how to save files in a different way to reduce the file size. Um, it also deals with how to fix Excel when it's starting with Windows and why it could be running slow. So that is a post. Again, you will find the link below the video and I do hope that you will hop over and take a look at it. So the last little gem or golden nugget that I found for you today is a post by my spreadsheetlabs.com and this is on awkward data. Now what this post does is set out a little problem for you to solve on how you can take some awkward data like this table here that we could see in his post. You can download his file as well and how you can turn it into a table like this. Kevin, the author of this post, then goes through a solution that he has come up with to summarize this awkward data and work a little bit better with this awkward data. So if you want something to get your teeth stuck into this week and to practice, head over to my spreadsheet up, my spreadsheetlabs.com and take a look at this post awkward data. So that is my Excel curation corner for this week. I do hope that you enjoy all of the posts that I have shared with you. I'll be back next week with another curation Excel corner video. So if you liked it, I hope you will give it a big thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel and hit that notifications button so you don't miss any more of my videos. And do check out all the links below these videos directly to these blog posts. See you next time. Goodbye now.